This is North Bay, known for having some of the most beautiful landscapes and draw-dropping sunsets that you'll ever see. But there's one thing that I couldn't help but think about is that no one's actually talking about the really big growing food scene that's here in North Bay. Hey guys, so if you're new to the channel, my name is Joe, and in this video I'm going to be taking you to some of the best restaurants that North Bay has to offer, from amazing hidden gems to some of the best classics and international cuisine in North Bay. So if you weren't hungry before this video, you're definitely going to be by the end of it. As always, make sure to like this video. It really does help to push this out on YouTube and to subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. So for the first restaurant in this video, we're actually gonna have to go all the way across the other side of the world, somewhere completely different than what we're used to. All right, so first up we have my favorite the hot and sour soup. It's got some shiitake mushrooms, bamboo shoots, there's egg ribbons throughout it with some little hints of cilantro. It's delicious. And that's what the yeah. soup is, is flavor. Me and Alicia have traveled like all over the world and we have tried to order spring rolls and we're like to see if it can compete with Mai Tais, but we've literally never had anything that have come anywhere close to how good these are. But I don't know what sauce they use. It's kind of like a sweet, like sour sauce. And it's literally, it just takes it to a whole nother level. It's just so freaking good. in Thai food, you're gonna get salty, sweet, sour, all in one dish. So I have two noodle dishes here. First we have the Pad Thai. This is probably the most famous dish in all of like Thailand. It's basically like a sweet kind of noodle dish. And then we have, this is the stir fried glass noodles. This is a lot more like salty kind of savory tasting. My personal choice is like the stir fried glass noodles. I freaking absolutely love it. But if you're looking for like a more of like a sweet dish, then definitely the Pad Thai. A lot of people love it. So we just got some Thai iced tea. I have no idea what's in it, but I'm really excited. It looks really good. Just look at it. Give her a little spoon. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. So it looks like, uh, I don't know if that's cream or something, but I don't, I'm not sure what's in it, but it's, it's really good. We also have the green curry here too. I think they have like probably three or four different kinds of curry. I know they have green curry, red curry, and I think like a gold Pineapple one, I think curry. too. Pineapple, so I think they have four or five different ones, but they gave us the green curry, which is also our favorite. And you always have to get it with some rice. So what you do is you kind of like flip it down like that. And there's a little like lip here and you kind of just slowly like pour it on there. So we're all done at Mai Tai. Alicia, show them the little king's ransom we have. There's at least so much stuff. So let's on to the next one. tried to refresh and it's a super hot day out so this is perfect. This is actually made from hibiscus. It's just like an iced tea I think to give it a try. It's super good and he was saying it's one of his best sellers at his market so if you're going to North Bay on a hot day at the markets you definitely grab one of these. They're really good. I find it kind of tastes like cranberry kind of. So this wouldn't be a traditional Mexican meal without starting off with some corn chips and guacamole. We were talking to Alfredo, the owner, and he said that every single thing here is handmade fresh and they actually grow all of their fresh produce at Leisure Farms in Sturgeon Falls. Oh, such a loud crunch, too. <laughs> Love guacamole. It's excellent. We're about to try some gorditas, which is basically like, what is that, like a tortilla? It, looks, it almost looks like a quesadilla. I think it's stuffed with cheese and meat. So this is habanero. And apparently we have a, what is it, serrano peppers too? It's serrano peppers for this one. This one's even hotter than the habanero ones. So we'll see how it goes. We might regret doing this. Does yeah. it smell good? Yeah, it smells hot. It smells hot. Okay, that's like a- Yeah, give it a go. Right. Let's do it. Oh, you got lots there. I think it might be it, like, like takes a minute. <laughs> might take a minute and then it's like Pow! We're gonna try. I already tried the habanero one. I didn't find it too bad. It like stings a little bit, but it's really really tasty. So we're gonna try this one. He said is actually hot. So I'll give it. Did you put a lot of it on there? Like a good like a kind? Is that a lot? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some heat there. Even their hot sauces are homemade. He also recommended we try a jadito, which we actually never had in Mexico. And he also said that it's really good with tequila, so 
Good to know. So we're trying some quesaberia. I've never had this before in my life. So he recommended you put a little bit of lime on it. And then he also said that you should use his spicy sauce on this one. Oh my god. This looks so freaking good. Mm. Literally just explosion of flavor. It's so good. These are the enchiladas. And we're going to dig in here with salsa verde. <laughs> so much that fell there. Messy things taste the best. If you're looking for something besides like a taco or a burrito, which everyone associates that with Mexican food, they have so much more stuff that's traditional to Mexico. for Rena's Restaurante. It's hidden inside of the Best Western Hotel, but it's not to be forgotten, and we're heading inside right now to have some great Italian cuisine. It really excites me, as when they do the combination of olive oil and balsamic, and you'll cut a little piece of bread and just dip it. That's a really good appetizer they do in Italy. Not very many Italian places do this. It's weird, but this place does it, and I'm happy. We just ordered for an appetizer. We got arancini, which is essentially like a risotto ball that's deep fried, and you have some tomato sauce, and there's also cheese in it. And when I was in Italy, I actually had a really, really hard time finding it, and they have it here. The arancini just arrived. Alicia has to do her Insta moment. Oh man, they're so crispy. I'm so excited for this. It's so hard to to find this anywhere. So cheers. Mm. Benissimo. Yeah, that chini didn't last very long. Just kidding. <laughs> the level of detail also in this restaurant, it's absolutely beautiful. It really does take me back to Italy. Like they put so much effort into this place. It's really, really styled beautifully. All of the passes here are all handmade. That's actually something really, really hard to find here, especially in Canada. I've ordered their most famous dish here at Farina's. It's the mushroom ravioli. If you come here, that's what I suggest getting because that's what I get here every single time. And it's absolutely amazing. There's some fresh Parmesan on top. Can't ask for any better. It's the biggest gnocchi I've ever seen. You can tell that that's fresh and made right here. It's good. To finish our meal off, we have a chocolate cannoli. We have a plain, which I think is like a vanilla. And we have pistachio. I'm really looking forward to the pistachio one myself. Oh, what a crunch. <laughs> The year is 1969. Life was good and it was about to get even better when this next restaurant on our list first opened its doors, serving up some of the best local eats you'll find in North Bay. We've just arrived at one of North Bay's most original restaurants, so I can't wait to show you guys what it has to offer. So we have absolutely like a huge spread here to choose from. And I'm really excited to try every single piece of it. We were talking to one of the co-owners, Gavin, and he told us that they actually make the pita breads handmade every single day in their bakery. And they just tweak the recipe of their crust for their pizza, and that's what they use for the pita bread. First, the BLT pita, like Joe was saying, it's the homemade pita dough. Then we've got their deluxe pizza, which is like their best pizza that they're known for. Then we've got their meatball subs. I eat these way too often, delicious. And then last but not least, we have their Friday bread. Ready? It's like huge. All right. It's so full. Guys, look at the cheese just coming off the head. Like, oh shit. Yummy. Yeah, I've had this before, I know it's really good. So when you actually have something that's homemade like this and we're really just not used to it, you can taste such a big difference. So they've served us this literal like whole feast and we've definitely done some damage to it. But I'm going to try a little piece of the deluxe. And something I'm starting to learn just eating at Greco's again is they don't skimp out on the toppings whatsoever. Like everything we've eaten is like fully loaded. There's so much stuff on it, which is definitely a great thing. So we've just arrived in downtown North Bay. If you're looking for a place to get some really sweet Instagram photos, then welcome to the best Instagram location in North Bay. So we 
just sat down and I got a almond croissant. Really excited about that because it brings me back memories of Australia. That's where I was first introduced to it. I got the lemon lavender honey creamer. Uh, lavender is like a huge thing this summer and this is not disappoint. So it's a huge tongue twister, say that 10 times fast. Another thing I love about this location is that they actually have like this drop down garage kind of thing. So there's a ton of natural light in here and it's a really good place that if you want to get some work done on your laptop. Now let's see if this rivals some of Australia's greatest croissants. Oh man, I thought she might be better than the ones we had, I'm not even kidding. Have a bite. So what th makes an almond croissant so special is it's kind of hard to see. But on the inside, it's like, it's like, I think it's like an almond butter or something like that. It kind of tastes like caramel, so it's like stuffed with this almond butter caramel. Almond paste. Uh, almond paste thing, and it's absolutely incredible. Don't get me wrong, you can get some fire Instagram photos at Good Glaze, but there's literally so much more that's going on here. They are making some of the most creative and delicious baked goods that you could get. They also make a really popular donut that also looks quite familiar. From starting off this business in their kitchen, this is truly a very inspiring story. And when you go to Good Glaze, good luck not getting anything to go. So we grabbed a little pack. We're gonna enjoy that later. This is Napoli, the birthplace of pizza. Good thing for you is that you don't need to fly halfway across the world to grab a slice of pizza that seriously rivals some of the best you'll find in all of Italy. When it comes to pizza, I have three words for you. Wood-fired pizza. That is why you have to come to Arugula. I'm making the, either the chicken cacciatore pizza, it's the hot Hawaiian. Have a hot Hawaiian. Yeah. Capicola, pineapple, red onions, banana peppers, mozzarella, and tomato sauce. Oh, you stinky dickens. So the food has just arrived. We have calamari. We have a caprese salad here, which is like a classic Italian salad. But this is the star of the show right here. This is margarita pizza, an Italian classic. I can't wait to dig into this pizza. Time to give it a try. Mm. There's nothing like a classic margarita. This is Caprese salad. It has this like mozzarella all over it with balsamic drizzle and it's to die for. Alicia's eating almost all the Caprese salad. I'm going to eat most of the pizza, so it's your loss. A lot of people will put the basil and then put it in the oven and that just burns it completely. So what you want to do is actually cook the pizza first and then right when it's hot, when you pull it out of the oven, you put the pieces of basil on so it sort of like cooks it a little bit after it's out of the oven. This brings me back to exploring places in Italy. So they definitely have some amazing pizza here. One of the best things that they have to drink are the espresso martinis. They take the martini glass and they rim it with the chocolate and then they add vodka. Well, they shake vodka with espresso and Kahlua and then they pour that in and then they top it with three espresso beans. And the rock is 700 degrees, so it keeps cooking while it sits on it. But you cut one piece at a time and then depending on how you like it, like I said, I like my medium rare. It's like about three and a half to four seconds on each side of the stone. You flip it, let it cook on the other side, three and a half to four seconds. So a lot of the thought process behind like the lava stones here is that they're so hot that it actually sears the steak and kind of sears in the juices. It's like a whole experience doing this. I'm gonna overcook my shrimp here. Well, that's okay. All you do if it starts to overcook is you just put it on the wood instead oh, of okay. the Oh, okay. Holy shit, it cooks it fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Mm, good, really tender too. I really want to talk about the deep fried mashed potato spring roll because it's the best thing on the menu. It's basically a baked potato that they've stuffed into a spring roll. They've deep fried it and then they layer it with sour cream, bacon, and green onion and cheese. If you want to try something different, I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting this.
We have come in search of a classic Canadian diner breakfast and it has brought us here to Sills Neighborhood Kitchen. First order of business at Sills is to get some coffee because someone, I'm not going to mention any names, gets a little cranky for their morning coffee. It is what it is. So here at Sills, they have all the classic Canadian breakfast stuff, but they also have some stuff that's also really, really unique to this restaurant. And we're excited to show you what we ordered. For those of you that have a sweet tooth for breakfast, they have a homemade crepe stuffed with strawberries and Nutella. Do I have to even say anything else? <laughs> I have to say one of my favorite things for breakfast is breakfast burritos and they do not mess around here. Chorizo sausage, home fries, and cheese. Sales recommendation on what to get is the Southwest Eggs Benedict, which they only do on the weekends, but it is Eggs Benedict with hollandaise sauce, chorizo sausage, and what I was most excited for was it's topped with fresh pico de gallo. So we're gonna dig in now, but we'll let you guys know how everything is. Alicia's about to try some of the stuffed Nutella crepes. Wow, that is like unbelievably good. Just got to Urban Cafe and it's actually the perfect kind of day. It's a little bit colder and like rainy, so this really suits well for this category. So this is gonna be our best sandwiches slash like soup places. Unfortunately, obviously our luck, we came a little bit later. It's about two right now. So they don't have any soups left, but trust me, one of the big, the best things they have here is their soups. They make homemade soups in every day of the week, Monday to Friday, there's a different kind of soup. We've got the chicken Kiev, which is like my go-to one. And Alicia, what did you switch it up to? I but... got the Mac. Talking bullshit. It's hard to see you when your eyes look dull. They have two different kinds of salad. They have the Caesar salad or they have a house salad. Joe got the balsamic with it and it smells delicious. I'm so excited to dig in. Not blue. And I didn't mention there's garlic butter on this, so that's a huge plus. Everyone likes butter. This is Teresa Bellissimo from Buffalo, New York. The genius behind the modern day buffalo chicken wing, a food that has taken the world by storm. And for my quest to find the perfect chicken wing in North Bay, there is only one place that came to mind and that is the moose. So one really great thing about the moose is actually their huge selection of wings. I have to say there's probably hundreds and hundreds of different kinds. On their menu, they have so many different kinds of like creative names for some of their sauces, like Wayne Gretzky, Avril Lavigne, Pam Anderson. Oh my God, that sounds good. The big pickle, creamy lemon dill and original fat boy. The Maui Wowie, pineapple curry and fat boy. Oh my God. So we have another huge feast on our hands here. So we have the cabbie wings. Alicia has her dill uh, wings mixed with uh, fat boy. We have some really good looking bruschetta too. And we have these, what are they called? The Roadhouse Roll-Ups. This is my creamy dill. It smells good. Did I flip the hair back? <laughs> Let's get that out of the hair. road. Mm. Mm, they look good. The worst thing is when you go somewhere and it's like a little tiny wing. These are like, they're huge. So it's yeah. definitely a huge plus for coming here. This is the bruschetta. And like, I didn't exactly see the ingredients, but I think that's like a garlic sauce on top and then it tastes like goat cheese feta, which I like a lot. So here we go. Can I drink yours? Why are you stealing my lemonade? You just gave it to me. Time to try the cabby wings. I have to pretend that I've eaten these, like this is the first time I've had these like a thousand times. <laughs> So amazing every time. <laughs> I recommend if you're gonna come here, you just get the get this kind or get the fat boy with something else. Because the fat boy sauce itself is just so good. So it's finally a hot sunny day in North Bay, and what better thing to do than to cool off and grab some ice cream? So we're excited to show you guys this indigenous owned ice cream truck. We're just trying to decide what to get. What are you thinking? There's tons of options. What are you thinking? Um, 
Well, I'm gonna get the monster cookie, obviously, and like the cookie sandwich, because that's just like the cutest thing I've ever seen. And then I think you should get the watermelon sherbet. Cookie monster ice cream, this is so fun. And it, uh, it looks nice, you almost wanna eat it. I know. We were told homemade cookies on it too. How's that? That's so massive. It's gonna be gone in like two seconds. And while Alicia's eating that, I got the watermelon sorbet, which I thought sounded really good. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna record myself eating this because I might be a little awkward, but I'll let you know what it is after. Quick update, it's amazing. And it's very really watermelon-y, if that's a word. But it tastes so good. Well, that's what I didn't want to record, but it's oh really God, good though, right? Good. Best way to describe it, watermelon-y. Yeah, it which does. Is good, just like which watermelon. is a good thing. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I put a ton of work into these videos, so I'd really appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe. I also wanted to thank all the restaurant owners out there that participated in this video. It was honestly truly, truly inspiring to see all the hard work and dedication that these people had to do. And on that note, guys, I'll see you in the next video. My mouth, so and that's just the cookie. Can't see shit, is it recording? I'm talking, let me chew. Well, <laughs> but I got probably the manliest drink that they have on the menu little pink lemonade here because that's just how I roll. <laughs> Don't do that. I can see your lips. And I wasn't awkward that time of our uh, our travels in Mexico. Uh -uh.